it is another bike review day and uh, today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I've got the brand new ZH2 SE. Now I've reviewed the old ZH2 before and it was lacking a little bit in the braking department on the suspension as well. Well for 2021 the SE has Stylemas and the Skyhook electronic suspension so uh, this could address all of my concerns with this machine. So today we're going to take this on a bit of a run to the seaside. The weather's all right, so we thought let's head down to the seaside. We're going to go down to Weymouth, which is about 150 miles, 200 miles round trip. Decent run on this bike. Let's give it a whirl and see what she is like on the open road. Chopsy, roll that intro. <laughs> Let's hit it. So first of all, got to say a massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles. This is one of their demos. So uh, if you want to ride this exact bike, this is their demo. So uh, check the links below, give them a ring, book yourself a test ride on this. So uh, let's see how it is first. Before you rush and do that, let's see if it's any good, shall we? So the ZH2 SE, this is actually the performance version. So the ZH2 SE, performance now with the performance you get an Akropovich yes this is fitted with an Akropovich <laughs> not that you could really tell any difference in volume to the standard bike the performance also has I think a, a different seat a, like a color-coded seat and it's got the rear a seat cowl you know so uh, it, it's got all the little main accessories from uh, from Kawasaki but I must say that Akropovich for this is humongous and it is not very loud so if it were my money I'd get the non-performance edition and then put my own exhaust on it because this really isn't loud enough considering it's got a street well it is a street legal pipe but uh, yeah not loud enough I'm afraid the bike still has the same specs as the first generation as far as the engine's concerned so it's uh, it's around about 200 horsepower at the crank I think these people, when I've seen these run on the dyno in stock form, they're sort of like 170 brake at the back wheel. So, you know, a lot of power. And of course, this is supercharged. So you get that drive through the gears. This thing is quick. This thing is absolutely ballistic. I can tell you from the last version and sort of drag races I've seen, this is faster than the Super Duke. I think this is this probably is the same sort of performance, you know, straight line performance as the Street Fighter, maybe even a little bit quicker than the Street Fighter. I think this is the fastest naked bike in the straight line. I think this will be the fastest. Yeah, the ZH2's the best, it's the fastest. That doesn't mean it's the best. What this bike is, it's all about that engine that performance the downside with the supercharger and I've mentioned this before you know by the time you've added the actual supercharger unit all the uh, gears etc to run the supercharger the metal plenum you need to sort of house the gas not the normal sort of plastic airbox it's all got to be aluminium this bike is fairly weighty this bike is a 240 kilo bike wet so you know it's on the the lardy side really there's no other word for it it's a little bit lardy as is the full h2 they 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 are they are heavy motorcycles they're not you know they're not full-on performance sports bikes so they're not track machines i think that is what it comes down to these are not track bikes these are about being fantastic road bikes this on track would be a bit heavy you could take it on track and have some fun, but you're not going to be chasing lap times on this. You're going to be getting overtaken by more lighter, more agile motorcycles. But for a road bike with just masses of power and presence, it's pretty impressive. Oh, let's get it through the twisties. Before we get a bit of rain, let's have a little look at it. 
in the twisty bits. One thing I've noticed straight away with this one, compared to the, uh, the non-SE, is the braking. Those Stylema calipers have really sorted it out on the braking perspective. The front brake is now very, very powerful. You can still notice the bike's quite heavy, but it's got this one finger braking and it is really, really powerful. Also, the suspension is actually pretty good. This has got that fully electronic KYB skyhook suspension. And I tell you what, it is much, much improved over the stock version. I would, if I was looking to get an H2, I would spend a bit extra, get the SE version. This one's also looks much better in these colors as well. This paint in the sun, hmm, I don't think we're going to see it today, but this paint in the sun, it's got a lovely fleck in it, it shines. Get this bike in the sunshine and it really, really looks beautiful. Mm, can't go that far, but it looks looks much better in this paint scheme. I've been, I've criticised this bike on its looks. It's not the prettiest of bikes, let's be honest. It's a little, it's a little bit ugly, I'm going to say it. It's a little bit ugly, but it looks much better in this SC colour scheme. The great thing about electronic suspension, of course, as you adjust the modes, the suspension then adjusts as well. This bike, I think, has got four modes. It's got a rider mode where you can set what you want, you know, how you want your suspension to be firm, soft, hard, how you want, your th if you want full power, if you want the traction control on or off. It seems the traction control is tied to the anti wheelie, so that's a little bit archaic, but okay. It's also got a sport, which I'm in now. It's got a rain and a road mode. So in the sport mode, the suspension is a little bit firmer. You know, I can feel it bouncing around a little bit. I can feel actually the texture of the tarmac a little bit. I've always found this, the uh, Kawasaki electronic suspension, especially on the SE model, it, 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 it made it a bit too easy on the ride. You couldn't feel anything on the tarmac front, which I guess is what you want if you're going a lot of touring. You don't want to be inundated with the sensation from the road. But in sport mode on this, I can actually feel that texture of that tarmac. So that's pretty impressive. But the great thing about this supercharged 1000cc lump, normally straight 4000, it's a little bit flat. But with that supercharger, you've got power on tap instantly and as the revs get above sort of seven eight thousand it absolutely takes off so my private road first gear <laughs> jeez it is fast it is lively that front wheel lifting the ground all the time supercharged power baby suspension is actually pretty good it's actually pretty good in the sporty setting like I say I can feel the tarmac it's reacting nicely to the bumps feels firm you can tell the bike's got some weight there though but changes direction nicely you know, a little bit of lever pressure and it goes over feels feels very confident inspiring Feels like you got a load of grip. But yeah, pretty nice, but it doesn't feel as planted as agile. Well, it feels as planted, but it doesn't feel as agile as like the Super Duke, the Street Fighter, the Tuono. Now, all of those bikes are better from a handling perspective. You know, you can't disguise the fact that this bike weighs you know, a good 20 kilos more than all of those other machines and, and 40 kilos more than some of them, you know. 40 kilos is a lot of weight to hide on a motorcycle, but it ain't bad, you know. The riding position is very upright. You know, it's a very comfortable position. It feels very wide between your legs. It's a very wide bike. Your legs are a little bit sprayed out, you know, much more so than those other bikes I've mentioned. But it's pretty comfortable, you're upright, the pegs are at a nice, reasonable height. The only thing I would say, and already I've been riding for 20 minutes, the seat has not got much padding in it. And I think by the end of the day, 
I'm going to be feeling it in my ass with this seat. Towards the back of the seat, it's got less padding, and my full H2 is the same. It's like, why can't Kawasaki give you some padding in the seat? You know, you're upright on this, you're sat right on that seat with all your weight. It needs to be better padded. We'll see how I get on with that. Well, here comes the rain. What a summer. Well, we are now in Salisbury. Salisbury, we are... Well, I didn't reset the trip straight away. We're about 45 miles into the trip. 45 miles in, it's finally stopped raining. <laughs> it's uh, British summers. you got to love them. Finally stopped raining. We've probably... We're not, we're not even halfway yet. Not even halfway yet. So, uh, put the GoPro back on because it's not waterproof. I had to take it off when we had a lot of rain. And, uh, yeah, let's jump back on. So, about an hour, about an hour and 15 minutes into the trip now. Oh, water on the visor. What I've noticed with the suspension, when you go between the different modes, like I say, it's got sport, road and rain and then an individual mode on the rider modes. I would imagine, I would have liked to have seen more of an adjustment between the suspension. It doesn't really feel that different as you go between them. Between the sport and the road, it's not massively different. You can see it's still, I mean, road now, and it's still a little bit jarry, you know, it's not. If you go into rain, it seems to us get a little bit more wallowy, a little bit more comfortable. But in the road mode, it's still quite hard. I'd like to have had that more of a, a nicer ride. Unless the suspension, it just hasn't got the range of adjustment like some of the uh, sort of the Olin's electronic suspension or the BMW systems. I think maybe it's not quite as good as the BMW or the Olin systems, if I'm honest. But it's fine. It's much better than standard. The standard setup was way too soft on this. The rear shock was woefully inadequate on the standard version. When you're pushing on, this feels fine. I just would have liked to have seen a slight bigger difference between the comfort and the and the sport, if you like. It's more engaging to ride than I'd say that the Street Fighter is. You know, you feel like you're going fast on this, whereas the Street Fighter, you don't perhaps feel as that you're going as fast as what you are. This, you very much feel that you're going fast. I think this is probably the fastest fit it is the fastest naked but it this also feels like you're going the fastest on this the speed is very apparent on this bike it's uh, it is an absolute bruiser Whoa! <laughs> it's also got a little niceties like cruise control set the cruise can i set the cruise i'm too high a gear to set the cruise oh, it's got some limitations on the cruise control i hate that set there we go fourth gear will let me do it bit of cruise control it works really well actually it's quite easy to use it's just enable it and then just press the set button so it's got its own controls so it's really good you can go up and down quick and easy i can't see any heated grips but i guess that could be an option there's no heated grip standard though even on this sc model which is a little bit of a shame Sort of 80 miles an hour, you're still getting a lot of wind on your helmet. The air, the screen deflects the air to about here. About here, that's deflecting the air off me. And then, and then you've actually got more air here, where that is sort of pushing all the air to sort of here. And then you're, you're in clean air at the top. I tell you, this bike does, for a naked, this bike does high speed pretty well. I think it's the best sort of high speed naked. If you want a naked to actually do a bit of speed on, I think this is the one actually. It's, it's, I don't know if it's the riding position. It could be this screen, you know, but it actually sits at speed pretty darn well for a naked. Ooh, 
quick shifter and blipper. Right, we're just past Burwood now. Oh, it's got, that exhaust does have a bit of a bit of a rasp to it, but it needs a bit more, doesn't it? I'm enjoying this despite the weather. <laughs> she span up then. She span up. Alright, where are we now? Cranbourne. This is a great bit of road, this next bit of road. When it's dry. Yeah, plenty of grip that time. A few little twisties here. Of course, <laughs> wet roads. Such a shame. We can't play on them properly. Well, we're now officially in Dorset. We're coming into uh, Wareham in a minute. So we've been uh, about 100 miles left on the range. Now it seems to be, if you're giving the bike a bit of fun, then if you're using that supercharger, the range could drop considerably. <laughs> but if you're cruising along sensibly, it's actually pretty good on fuel, I reckon. I've done about almost 80 miles now, I'd say. Uh, 68 on the trip, but I didn't reset that at the start of the journey, so I think I'm coming up to 80-ish miles. It says I've got 99 miles range, but I don't think I'm actually going to have 99 miles, mile, uh, 99 miles range. I've got two blobs left on the fuel gauge, so... Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much fuel we're going to get out of this tank, but I reckon it's going to be about 100 miles, 110 miles. My backside is starting to get a little bit tender now. I can start to feel it a little bit. Uh, how long have we been riding? We've been riding uh, a couple of hours. It's half past nine now. I set up about half seven-ish. Look at this. This is very pretty, isn't it? Uh, yeah, backside starting to feel it a little bit, but uh, I think it's time for a break in a minute anyway. Throttle response is really good. I've just been keeping it in the road mode really because of the weather. It has got a rain mode. I have tried the rain mode. It's just sort of very, very soft throttle response. And the suspension goes a little bit softer still, I think, in the rain mode. We want to go right here. But yeah, you know, the throttle response is lovely. It's very smooth. It's very easy to ride this. Very easy bike to ride. Quick shift and blipper is really nice, even at low speed. I think it's got very few niggles, this. I can't really think of... Uh, what's this guy? I haven't really noticed any niggles, really. Typical Japanese loveliness. Morning, morning. The sun is trying to break out, but we've got some massive clouds ahead, so... Uh, well, the sun has broken out. We've got the sunshine! Dry out those roads, Mr. Sunshine. But looking at those clouds ahead, I don't think it's going to last. We're about 15 miles from Weymouth now. This is like the main way into right Weymouth now. We're back on like the main road. You see the horse in the uh, in the hills over there? Oh, the trees in the way. It's like a chalk horse cut into the into the tree into the hillside over there. Can you see it? Can you see it? Probably not on the GoPro. You won't. I don't know how old that is. I'd imagine it's pretty old. I'll get a photo of it on the screen. And we are in Weymouth Seafront. Boats are in the water. Pedalo, anybody? Do feel sorry for the people who've come on holiday this time of year down here to the seaside and the weather's been absolutely terrible for them. from the seafront. Probably get someone come and tell me off in a minute. Weymouth seafront. Mid-August. <laughs> Look at this weather. Absolutely unbelievable. Still got a load of the uh, cruise ships just parked up in the harbour. Obviously not running at full capacity, are they? And our valley's there. It is, yeah, it is, yeah. Are you just here, how dangerous 
You used to be a Hells Angel? Yeah, girl. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I loved it. Been, you know, we used to have sidecars on the motorbike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, oh, fantastic. I was pregnant. I went one way, he went the other. Oh, really? Oh, come missus. off. Yeah. Sidecar come off. Yeah, he went one way, I went the other. He said, I've oh, got me missus, they'll come back and get me. Yeah, oh, my <laughs> word. <laughs> that sounds like a bit of an experience yeah, anyway. Yeah, See you later, bye. That was Angel. Go on. Right. You can't stand here, I don't know why you the camera. That's it, breakfast eaten at the vegan cafe. <laughs> Not quite what I was expecting. Not quite the full English I was really hoping for. But thankfully, they still sold, still sold eggs. Now just uh, fried eggs on toast then for me. The fuel range, it's been brilliant. 50, uh, well, that's 110 miles done, because I didn't reset it at the start of the, the journey. So 110 miles, and it still says I've got 57 miles range. So I think really you're looking at 130, 140 miles on this bike. I don't think it really has got 57 miles left in the tank. Maybe it has. But you're sort of looking at a 130, 140 mile range, which is pretty decent. It is an 18 litre tank, so you know, quite a big tank. But even still, it's a supercharged thousand. You know, you're not expecting this to be, uh, to sip the fuel, are you? Is the SE worth the extra over the standard bike? I mean, this is this actual one with the performance pack is, I think, nineteen and a half thousand pounds. That's almost a twenty thousand pound motorcycle. I probably wouldn't get the performance pack because that big Akopovich exhaust is obviously expensive and uh, doesn't really give much more volume than the standard bike. So I would probably get the standard SE which is I think £18,000 so it's still a lot of money it's a couple of thousand more than the Stockeroo but I think it's probably worth the couple of extra thousand for the better brakes the better suspension even though the suspension is a little bit disappointing that it doesn't soften right up for a really comfortable ride when it is in the sporty ride it gives the bike much more support than the standard suspension it was really lacking on the standard one so you could get the standard one get a cartridge kit a different rear shock and it wouldn't be far off this but um, yeah well, because you could do that but you'd almost be spending as much as this one then so you may as well just get this one the bike isn't the ultimate super naked you know this isn't a, a naked you want to take on track this is just equivalent of a you know a muscle car bit like that Hellcat I could just see peaking. It's like an American muscle car. It's the fastest naked you can buy, the most powerful naked you can buy. I know the Street Fighter is slightly more on paper, but this feels faster than the Street Fighter. This is, now if you want to experience a 200 horsepower naked, you feel like you're riding a 200 horsepower naked with this, even though it is, you know, perfectly controlled, well-mannered, it's, it's an exciting ride. Not the ultimate super naked in my view of what I'd want to buy, but a bloody lovely motorcycle at the end of the day. So there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to ride this exact bike, this is from Wheels Motorcycles, as I mentioned. So give Wheels a ring. Links below. Book yourself a test ride on this. You won't be disappointed. This thing is a missile. But I hope you enjoyed a little run today. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. It's that one. I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs>
11 litres. It's only put 11 litres in. It's not too bad at all, actually. 